Number one, a girl throws a paper airplane from her treehouse. The height of the plane is a function of time and can be modeled by this equation. Height is measured in feet and time is measured in seconds. Evaluate h of zero and explain what the value means in this situation. So here we're plugging in a time of zero and then it's gonna give us back the height. So this is the, what this means in this situation is that this is the initial um, height that the plane was launched at. And then when we go to figure out h of zero, we'll just plug t equals zero into our equation. So we'd have 25 plus 2.5 times zero minus one half zero squared. And then anytime we multiply something by zero, it's zero. So these two pieces are gonna be zero. So our initial height is just gonna be 25. B, what would a solution to h of t equals zero mean? So now this is giving us the height is zero and it's asking us what the time is. So if we figured out a time value here, it would mean um, the time when the plane, when the height is zero. Meaning that the plane is on the ground, right? C, what does the equation h of nine equals seven mean? So this one is giving us a time value and a height. So this one is saying after nine seconds, the plane's height is seven feet. Then D says, what does the model say about the airplane 2.5 seconds after the girl throws it if each of these statements are true? So we see that after two seconds, it's at 28 feet. Two and a half seconds, it's at 28.125. And then three seconds, it's back to 28. And so we see this symmetrical height here. And we see that it's happening after an equivalent amount of time. So 0.5 seconds for each. So what this tells us is that this value here is the vertex, right? Or the maximum value. So this tells us that at 2.5 seconds, the plane is at the max height. <clears throat> and that that max height is 28.125. Number two, a square picture has a frame that's three inches thick all the way around it. The total side length of the picture and the frame is X inches. Which expression represents the area of the square picture frame? So we know that this length right here is X. And so is the other one since it's a square. And then we know this thickness is three. So if we're looking for the length of the little square in here, okay, without the border, we would have to take X, the full length, and we would have to subtract off both of these threes, right? So we'd have to subtract that from the length. So that would really, we could simplify it to X minus six. This would be the length of the little square. And then also the width since it's a square. So when we do area of a square, or a rectangle, we're gonna take length times width. So the length is X minus six and so is the width. So we would multiply those together. So D would be the expression that would represent the area. Number three, the revenue from a youth um, league baseball game depends on the price of the ticket. Here is a graph that represents the revenue function. Select all true equations. So R of five is a little bit more than 600. So if we look here, here's five. It's a little bit above the 600 mark for revenue. So that's true. B, R of 600 is less than, is a little less than five. Well, 600 isn't on here. It stops at 40. So this is not true. Okay, we do not see any data about ticket prices being 600. The max 
possible ticket price is $15. Well, here's ticket prices, okay? We go up to $30 here. Um, so that is not true. The max ticket price is not $15. What is true is that at $15, we're at the max revenue. So the max revenue is $1,125. That is true. And then if a ticket costs um, $10, the predicted revenue is 1000 So if we go to 10 up to the graph, we see that that is producing $1,000 revenue. And then at 20, does $20 also produce 1000 And that is true as well. Number four, a garden designer designed a square decorative pool. The pool is surrounded by a walkway. On two opposite sides of the pool, the walkway is eight feet, and on the other two sides, it's 10 feet. And they gave us a diagram. The final design for the pool and walkway covers an area of 1,440 square feet. The side length of the pool is X. So if we call this um, the side length of the pool, so here's our pool. This is an X by X because it's a square. And it says write an expression that represents the total length of the rectangle, including the pool and walkway. So now we want to come up with a measurement for this length and um, this width, which are going to be different since it's a rectangle. And um, so part one is the total length and part two is the total width. So for, and it doesn't matter, you could switch these around length and width, doesn't matter which one you do as which. So I'm just going to do um, the length as this blue one. And so in order to get the total length, I need to take the length of the pool, right? So I'm going to need the width or the pool here, and I'm going to need to have this part and this part. So it's going to be X and then plus two tens, okay? Because that's the extra width here is 10, and then this is X, and then this is 10. So it's gonna be X plus 20 for that length. Then if I go to do the width, kind of like the height in my picture here, okay? So this height is gonna have an eight and an eight for these, and it's going to have the pool measurement in there of X. So it's going to be X plus 16 for that. So then it wants us to give an expression of the total area of the pool. And remember, for the area, you're going to multiply the length and the width together. And so we're going to be multiplying the X plus 20 expression times the X plus 16 expression. Then it wants us to write an equation of the form that says your expression equals 1440. So you're going to take this expression that you created here, and then you're just going to set that equal to 1440. Then it says, what does a solution to the equation mean in this situation? So your solution would be finding X, right? So your X's would be your solution and those represent the um, length and width of the pool. So the solutions are gonna be the length slash width of just the pool. Number five, suppose M and C each represent the position number of a letter in the alphabet, but M represents the letters in the original message and C represents the letters in a secret code. The equation C equals M plus two is an encoded message. Write an equation that can be used to decode, so do this backwards. So we would just wanna do the inverse. So we'd wanna take the letter in the new word, okay? and subtract two. So the code minus two to go backwards. And then they want us to decode this. So if we just write out the alphabet so that we can see. So 
So then we just want to look for the letter in the code and go backwards two from it. So here's O and we'll go back to that's M. C back two is A. V back two is T. J back two is H. Then our next letter starts at K back two is I. U back two is S. Next word starts at H, so we'll go H back to is F, W back to is U, and then P back to is N. So then the decoded word or the decoded phrase is math is fun. Number six, an American traveler who's headed to Europe is exchanging some U.S. dollars for European euros. At the time of travel, $1 can be exchanged for 0.91 euros. Find the amount of money in euros that an American traveler would get if he exchanged $100. So if you have $100, we would just multiply that times 0.91, and that would equal 91 euros. And if he exchanged 500, then we would just take 500 times the 0.91, and um, we would end up with 455 euros. Oops. Then it says write an equation that gives the amount of money in euros of a function of the dollar amount being exchanged. So your euros equals 0.91 times the number of dollars that you're exchanging. Then it says, upon returning to America, the traveler has 42 euros to exchange back to U.S. dollars. So how many dollars would he get if he exchanged, if the exchange rate was the same? So then we're just going to do the inverse of this. So the dollars that he would have would be the euros divided by 0.91 this time. And so the number of dollars that he would be getting back would be 46.15 or $46.15. And then it says write an equation that gives the amount of dollars as a function of the euro. So that's just using this. So the dollars would equal the euros divided by 0.91. Number seven, a random sample of people are asked to give a taste score either low or high to two different types of ice cream. The two types of ice cream have identical formulas, except for that they differ in the percentage of sugar um, in the ice cream. What values can be completed so that it suggests that there is an association between the taste score and percentage of sugar? Explain your reasoning. So if there is an association, then these numbers need to significantly change based on how much sugar there is. So you know, I mean, the idea here is probably that people like the, the ice cream more when there's more sugar, right? So the more sugar there is, the better it tastes. And so if there is an association, then a lot less people would be giving this one a low rating. So you can just pick a number significantly lower. Like you could say 50 people said this one was had a low taste score. And then you'd want to give a significantly higher amount to the number of people that um, gave it a high test score. So like in this one, we had more low than high. So now we just want more high than low. And you can, I mean, this is really arbitrary. You can pick kind of whatever you want. So I'm just going to put 300. So now we can see that there's like six times, like six times more people, okay, liking giving the 15% sugar higher than here. So more people gave it low than high in the 12%. And then we flipped that around. So now more people are giving it a higher um, rating than low. And that's because there is an association between the amount of sugar and the taste test, or that's what we're putting into this table. 